G'day guys, welcome back to round four slash gathered rounds edition of Just the Tips. Now last week I made the horrible mistake, classic mistake, of saying it was an easy round to tip and my tipping was horrendous. And I, in hindsight, don't know why I said it was easy because there was quite a number of 50-50 contests. Like Brisbane and Collingwood was somewhat close. Port versus Melbourne could have gone either way. St Kilda versus Essendon and I openly said at the time I didn't really know who was going to win that game. Western Bulldogs versus West Coast, that was a real toss-up and then Richmond upsetting Sydney. So I ended up getting four out of eight. So to be specific about which ones I got wrong, I got the first game wrong. Uh, I tipped Brisbane to beat the Pies. I obviously tipped St Kilda to beat Essendon, Sydney to beat Richmond, and then Port Adelaide versus Melbourne, I incorrectly tipped Port Adelaide. So before I get into this round's tips, I will shout out the winners of all our different competitions, which by the way, it is still open to join, still got plenty of time, join whenever you want. All the information you need for the tipping competition and the fantasy competition is in the description of this video. So let's go through the weekly winners. So the members tipping winner this round was Kevin Fetline's top hat. Shout out Joycey, who has been on this channel, co of this channel. In fact, he won this round with five and a margin of six. How the hell did five win? But the overall tipping winner is Asher335, who got a perfect eight with a margin of five. Asher was the only person to get a perfect eight this round, so well done. Now for the overall leaders of the members competition is once again Graz, who's gone back to back to back, I think, with 23 correct tips and a margin of 78. And then the leader overall, we have a new leader of the general footing tipping competition in Kingpin Clarkson, again with 23 and a margin of 45. So well done, everyone there. And then in our fantasy competition, it was Darcy Perkins with the team Third Degree Hearns. I like that. That's actually really good. Uh, with an average score of 2017. I got about 1860. My team sucks. Uh, but well done to all the winners this week. Great. So we're back at it again with Adelaide versus the Ds to start off gather round. So don't forget, uh, other than a couple of games here, the South Australian teams have home grounds this week, but no one else does. Everything else is neutral, which is a little bit of an ex uh, extra variable to consider when looking at these head-to-heads. But we'll start off with the Crows and the Ds. The Crows have been really disappointing to start this year. 0-3, lost to the Gold Coast. They lost to Fremantle. They also lost to the Cats at home. But just not playing like the, the same Adelaide we've become a little bit accustomed to, or at least expected to see this year. They were particularly disappointing against Fremantle. Now, they got the Ds, who by contrast have played some really good footy this year. Literally won at this ground last week against the Power in a game where statistically, you know, you wouldn't have thought looking at the stat sheet that they won, but their ability to take the big moments, to stay composed, to kick those big goals was really impressive. They've generally got a good record at this ground, so I'm, I'm going to start showing you the head-to-head -head here, which I think is worth mentioning. So the last time these two sides met was four points the difference at the MCG, and the time before that, Adelaide lost to Melbourne by five goals. There was a, a win in 2021 where the Crows snapped Melbourne's winning streak by one point. So overall, I think you can conclude from that Melbourne aren't bad at this ground against Adelaide specifically. Generally pretty good at the ground as well with a win over Port last week. I don't think there's any doubt in my mind, which is famous last words. I'm going to tip Melbourne here pretty comfortably. I'm going to say 34 points. Then we've got the Brisbane Lions and North Melbourne at Norwood Oval. Again, this one is, um, you know, a little trickier with the ground situation. It's not a home game for Brisbane, truly. It's neutral. Um, and I feel like did they play last gather round at this ground? I think they might have. Forgive me. It was actually Adelaide Hills um, where Brisbane won that game by 75 points. So not sure how much to read into that. Also, we factor in Brisbane are not looking the same as they did this time last year. Admittedly, I think they did lose one or two games early last season, but I think they look a little bit more lackluster this year. And by contrast, North Melbourne, who started the year well last year, this was around the point I reckon their drop-off started. I could be wrong, but I think it was around this time. So point being, like this game could and should be more competitive than it was last time. That being said, uh, Brisbane really have a point to prove here. North Melbourne, I think, have looked decent in all of their losses this year. It hasn't been the easiest fixture last week going down by 51 points again. Against a good Carlton side with quality tools. Brisbane also have some good tools. I know Hipwood's out of form, etc., but Danaher, you know, I think he's going to be a threat regardless of how well the team's playing. I don't expect a belting here. You know, Brisbane were about 20 points shy of Collingwood last week in a game where Collingwood's pressure was really good. I don't think they're equipped to belt North Melbourne at the moment, but I, I would expect them to win with all due respect to North Melbourne. Could an upset happen? Yeah, and if it did, if it did, You'd, you'd think Brisbane are probably out of the running for the eight. Maybe not out of the running, but you, you wouldn't bet on it from that point. I'll still tip Br Brisbane to win this, get some confidence back by 26 points. Now we've got the Power and Essendon. I think this could be a good game because the last two games these two sides played against each other last year were good. Put Adelaide one in Adelaide by five points. And then the other game was the game where Houston kicked the goal after the siren to beat the Dons. And the Dons are coming off 
some pretty good performances, like two wins to start the year, a five-goal loss to Sydney, beat Hawthorne by four goals, and then beat St Kilda. So there's no reason to think this game won't be competitive again. I think also Port Adelaide have looked pretty slick. Easy fixture to start the year, no doubt, until they played the Ds and then fell a little bit short. But I don't think they were too far off, and it felt like, you know, just a little few things they needed to tweak to get the ball inside 50, 60, six times and winning the ball out of the center. You do feel like something's building at Port Adelaide. They just haven't really been able to click yet. So that makes the Dons a little bit vulnerable here. But let's look at the head-to-head. So like I said, the last two games were pretty close. 2022, uh, Port Adelaide had a big win at Marvel. 2022 as well, uh, Port won that game by 16 points. Port were pretty average that year. And 2021, Port Adelaide won this game by 54 points in a year where both teams made the finals. You don't read too much into head-to-head, but I do think it's worth looking at how teams play certain grounds and I think Essendon should have some reason for optimism here but I do think Port Adelaide's a really quality side and therefore they'll win this game by 26 points you know I think uh, they're, they're probably a four goal better side than Essendon this version of Essendon anyway let's go 26 points if you're someone who's always wanted to start investing but has found it difficult with the current pressures of cost of living thankfully now there is an easy way to get started new venture wealth is helping everyday Australians gain instant access to their superannuation so they can invest in assets like cryptocurrency shares and property they simplify the process and guide you on how to set up a self-managed super fund allowing you to instantly access your superannuation and start investing Investing right away. And the best part is you can use your superannuation balance for all the setup costs of your very own self-managed super fund. Getting started is as easy as visiting the New Venture Wealth website with the link below. You can book a free one-on-one consultation with one of their team, or if you prefer, you can call them directly on 1300 050 939 for more information. Now there is an added bonus here because if you are a True Footy subscriber, you can use the discount code 20 off when you complete your online application. I would highly recommend visiting their website, like I said, link in the description below, or if you prefer, you can call them directly and you can speak to a consultant who can help you better understand what's involved. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh, I'm not even gonna bother with the head to head here. You know, I looked it up actually for a recent video. Uh, the Eagles have only beaten Sydney three times, three times since Ben Cousins' comeback game at Subiaco Oval, and we all know what happened last year. We all know what happened. The clash between these two sides was cancelled due to lightning, so we never saw who would have won that game. Um, This is going to get ugly for West Coast. I have been defensive of West Coast performances in the first three rounds uh, in the sense that it's not as bad as the media is portraying or what people are saying. It's just that we cannot score. (laughs) They still suck, though. They're still the worst team in the comp, no doubt. But um, I still think we're pretty removed from what we saw last time between these two sides. That being said, Sydney is a better team than they were this time last year. Yeah, they're coming off a a, um, loss against Richmond. Richmond's pressure was immense. They were fantastic. Sydney got a little bit of a reality check. I don't know what to make of this ground in particular, Adelaide Hills. The only time I remember West Coast playing there was um, a preseason game earlier this year, which they got flogged in, but it was the preseason. So like, there's no meaningful form line there. Sydney could be angry after last week. They could. And their confidence going into this game will be high. And by contrast, West Coast probably has a few uh, traumas from last time we met. The only chance West Coast has of making this not a belting is if they really study and get inspired by what Richmond did in terms of their pressure and their suffocation of Sydney last week. Is West Coast equipped to do that? I'm not really not really confident about that. Um, I think the max this will give me is 60. Oh, no, 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 wait, never mind. I'm going to say Sydney by 91 points. Fremantle versus Carlton. This should be a decent game, maybe, maybe. It's hard to know. It's hard to know with Fremantle. Like, they're 3-0, played some good footy. Um, They were far too good for the Crows last week. Was also, you know, not really looking amazing themselves, but they were still dominant. And sometimes, you know, good teams win ugly. So we're still learning about Fremantle. And uh, this is probably their... Looking at the form lines, this is their first real test this year. You, you could say that about Brisbane, and they were good for too good for Brisbane, def, definitely. But all their other opponents haven't won a game this year, whereas Carlton, we know, is good. So you'd expect this to be a good test and a really good litmus test for Fremantle. But Carlton haven't really put a foot wrong this year. They beat Richmond. Richmond are looking spirited. They beat Brisbane at the Gabba. Again, you can make the argument, the same thing with Fremantle. Maybe not the win that we thought it was at the time. And then about 50 points better than North Melbourne last week. So sure, you could say none of those are outstanding wins. They've looked pretty good while doing it. And we know they're a good team from last year. They just they haven't really put a foot wrong yet. So tricky one. There's, there seems to be some funny results between these two sides. A little bit of bad blood. I think at Adelaide Oval, Fremantle seem to play there okay against Adelaide. They seem to play poorly there against Port. If Fremantle win this... This will give them some legitimacy for the first time, I think, as a, as a genuine finals contender and potentially better. That being said, I don't expect it to happen. I think Carlton will be too good. 
and they'll win this game by oh, 30 points. Bulldogs versus Geelong. Oh, this is tough. This is tough. Both of these sides missed finals last year. Both of these teams were kind of written off in terms of getting back into finals. Both teams looking like final sides at the moment. Bulldogs, again, I think they're pretty good at Adelaide Oval, or at least the one that comes to mind is their performances against Port Adelaide. Oh, I'm really thinking of the prelim. It's hard to really look up how the Western Bulldogs go at Adelaide Oval specifically, whereas the Cats have already won there this year, and they're looking pretty, pretty damn good. Bulldogs beat them last year. That is true. Both sides, lesser versions of the teams that we're seeing at the moment. This is a real 50-50. I could see either team winning this. I actually don't know who I'm going to tip. I'm really, really stunned. So Geelong, who have they beaten? They beat the Crows at Adelaide Oval. I expect the Bulldogs to be better than the Crows at the moment. They beat Hawthorne. They beat St Kilda, who are a good side at GMHBA. The Bulldogs, by contrast, beat West Coast by 76 points. You kind of expect that to happen. Far too good for Gold Coast, who were playing pretty decent at the time. And they lost to Melbourne by 45 points. So... Not a whole lot to go off here. I think I... I don't know. I think I'm going to tip the Cats. It's more gut feeling than any real logic. But I could see the Bulldogs winning this game by six goals as well. I, I think I think I'll tip the Cats, but I feel like I'm going to get this one wrong. Go the Cats by 12 points in a good game. Battle of the expansion clubs between the Gold Coast Suns and GWS. Now, Gold Coast started the year fairly well. They beat Richmond, who, you know... Other than that first half of that first game, uh, Richmond have looked pretty respectable in my opinion, so... Give them the credit for a good win there. They also beat the Crows by six points. Should have won the game by more. Fell asleep in the last quarter. Adelaide, who hasn't played well, nearly came back and won that. And that was Adelaide's best quarter for the whole season so far. And then they you know, got smacked by the Bulldogs. GWS, by contrast, they've had a few easy wins. So beaten North, beaten West Coast, as you'd expect. In round one, they beat Collingwood, who were struggling a little bit. Nonetheless, nonetheless, that doesn't make me think any less of the GWS because I think they look really good. And, uh, you know, finally got a key forward who's, who's kicking goals routinely. I think I'm just going to go with a logical argument here and say GWS are just a far better team. So I'll say six goals, but who knows? Who knows? I'm bad at tipping. Richmond and St. Kilda. This is, again, tricky. Again. Because, uh, like, I've, I've talked up Richmond a lot and I've given them a lot of credit for the spirit with which they're playing, the pressure. You know, as an Eagles fan, I'm looking at what they're doing with a young side that's undermanned with injuries. And they've really, really earned my respect. Not that they didn't have it to begin with, but they've just come off a win against Sydney at the MCG. So um, credit where it's due. However, however, we talked about the injury list and it's gotten worse. So out of the last week's game, they've lost Tom Lynch, um, hamstring injury. Noel Bolt has done an MCL. Two really key pillars here. And I think that might affect them going into this game. And the Saints were a little bit disappointing against Essendon. Probably had their chances to, to kick ahead and, and really seal that game. And then in the last quarter, Essendon sort of ran over the top of them. They only kicked two goals, six to one goal one. But disappointing game for the Saints. That being said, on the whole, their form has been pretty decent up until that point. And they should be too good here. I don't, again, know too much about the grounds and stuff and who that suits. But St. Kilda, I think, will be very hard to score against, particularly without Tom Lynch. And I don't know if they're going to win well or win ugly, but either way, St. Kilda should win this game by 20 or 21 points. I think I really respect what Richmond is doing here, but they won't have the end product to put scores on the board. Collingwood versus Hawthorne. Here we go. Collingwood, again, look like they're a little bit back. It's only one game. We don't want to extrapolate one performance and say they're fine from here, but they might be. And they were pretty good against Brisbane and really brought that level of intensity and pressure, um, which, you know, it has been a feature of their game, a hallmark of their team over the last couple. So I think the confidence piece will be as big as anything here for Collingwood. And if they win this game, they go back to two and three and obviously finals well and truly still on the agenda. So the thing that might count against them was that Hawthorne beat them last year. And Hawthorne can be a plucky team. That being said, Hawthorne's start to the year has been disappointing. Injuries notwithstanding, they have not played like from the eye test as well as some may have expected this year and put up a decent fight against the Cats. Uh, that might have been their best performance of the year considering the quality of the Cats. I know they were decent against Essendon but still lost the game by four goals and then a poor performance against Melbourne in the middle there. So I'm pretty confident here Colin was going to win. I think they're pretty decent at Adelaide Oval as well. Uh, at least they've had some narrow wins but a lot of their wins have been narrow. So let's go with the Pies here. They should be too good by about 32 points in my opinion. So that wraps up the round of tipping. Um, as we start to look at the Ladder. It's starting to make a little bit more sense now. I think that might be the end of the early buys. In fact, it is. All of the teams now, except Collingwood, have played every game. Does that mean that Collingwood and Sydney, that's right, Collingwood and Sydney's will have the buys, and then after this point, the ladder's going to start 
being a little bit more reflective. Obviously, it's never really reflective at round five. That's why I do power rankings. But nonetheless, starting to get a little bit of a feel. So what do we feel about that top four? Should we go Sydney, Melbourne, Carlton? Yep, that's probably been reflective of the best teams so far, at least on exposed form. Geelong, Port Adelaide, Fremantle, the Bulldogs. That's about right. St Kilda, a little bit down on percentage there, but still in that mix. Collingwood, obviously, still in that mix too, having played an extra game, to be fair. Essendon and Gold Coast, Brisbane make up the next group. Richmond down there in 14th. Bottom four is somewhat interesting, only because Adelaide's there. Actually, the, the, uh, the rest of the bottom three is pretty much what was expected and what was the case last year, save for North and Hawthorne switching spots. So starting to take shape to some extent, uh, but again, a lot to play out. But let me know in the comments, guys, what you agree with and disagree with. Game of the round, well, what is going to be game of the round this week? There's a few contenders. Bulldogs and Geelong, probably my game of the round. Upset of the rounds, pfft, upset of the round. Might be Gold Coast and BGWS. That would be kind of shocking, but I could kind of see it. Like I feel like Gold Coast have capacity, but they also have the capacity to just drop off. And I feel like in a game where they're not tipped at all, including by me, it's hard to imagine them winning. They could, considering like a random venue as well. Anyway, let me know your thoughts, guys. As always, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you being subscribed, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.